we've got a drawing and one of the first things you can do towards working out some lighting, your basic lighting, is what I call a go no go situation or a light no light situation. And what I've got here is a um, piece of copy paper. I've had the drawing, I've scanned my drawing and I've duplicated that three times onto just a standard piece of A4 copy paper. And what, what I'm going to do now is use that to add a basic Copic marker. I think this is number four. And uh, what I'm going to do is start with the lowest resolution lighting scenario. And that means where there is light, I'll leave the paper blank. Where there is shadow, I will mark in. So let's just do a very basic idea of what that might be. So let's just say, obviously all this foreground, we're inside, this is an interior space we're looking through and there's no light in here. This reflected light is all that sort of stuff, but I'm not, at this stage, I'm not concerned. It's just, where is there light? Where is there no light? Foreground, interior space. Yes, there is light in here of some description, but there's no direct light. So what we're talking about is direct light or no direct light. You can get fancy with this and you can, well, let's just say this entire foreground area and structure is in shadow. Just to illustrate some of what I mean by how you can work out your simplest form of lighting. This doesn't have to be some perfect representation of what might be there. You're somewhat approximating what and roughly where your light might be. Okay, so we've got a very basic light coming in here over some, some landscape structure. Over there across the snow. There's an embankment here, so there's light going up onto that. And there's a bit of a an, another layer behind. And so I've kind of tried to feather very, very loosely with the Copic, feather the light. So it's just this area of light, some catching the structure and light in here and everything else is in shadow. Now, obviously the way I've used the Copic here very quickly, it's created a, uh, what you could say, a second value, a lighter second value. And that's okay. But that's one way of describing a very simple go, no go or light, no light situation. Well, this back here is quite dark. That's probably some of the darkest darks we'll see in the entire painting. So now I want to take that first idea and this time represent it a little more accurately in terms of those values. I'm not trying to get detail in any of this in any kind of way whatsoever. There's just no point. It's a, sh it's a light shadow map. Now you can do this digitally, of course. Um, you can do it in Photoshop. You could do it in on an iPad. stuff a little better if we wanted to okay this could be interesting I don't mind some of the light there's light coming through hitting hitting this guy across the top of that there's something over here out of shot that is casting a shadow I say to my students quite often that nine oh, maybe not nine but most often than not it's what what is outside the frame that is influencing what is inside the frame is is um, quite important. It's what adds a little bit of interest to your lighting and adds some some idea of a larger scale. There's more environment. There's more environment to the world that you've established um, beyond the frame of that that image itself. 